Hi, welcome to the Knitting with Lucy podcast. My name is Abby. This is episode 21. Thank you so much for joining me. Lucy's my cat and she's sitting on the couch right over there sleeping. Um, it's been a really long time. Oh, before I get to that, I'm supposed to tell you where you can find me. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as Le Jardin Fleur. Um, my, my page is currently private, but feel free to follow me. Um, and you can also, excuse the tissue, that's gross, I'm sorry. You can also find me on Ravelry as Long Ride Home. All of my projects are on there. It's missing a couple recent ones, um, but uh, pretty much everything that I've made since 2008 is on there. So feel free to check that out. Um, it's been a really long time. Last time I made an episode, it was in March, and it had been a while since the one before that. A lot has been happening since that time. Um, first, I want to apologize that I'm a bit of a sight for sore eyes, like I was about to say before. It's the weekend, I have no makeup on, you know, it is what it is. Um, I am also nine months pregnant, which I didn't mention in the last episode since it was still pretty early on in, in this process. And uh, when you are nine months pregnant, the last thing you want to do on the weekend is like put on real clothes and do your hair or makeup or whatever. <laughs> I'll give you a glance since I feel like that's, you know, kind of what people always want to see. It's amazing how when you're pregnant you become kind of like public property, but <laughs> here we go. There's that nine-month belly for you, I'm not lying. So I'm going to give myself some like dispensation or what have you for this face um, based on that. Also, you may notice we have a new background because I moved. I mentioned that I believe in the last podcast that we were going to be moving in May, which is what occurred. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is a new space. Obviously, you're only getting a little bit of a glimpse of it. But uh, yeah, we really like it here. We're across from the water. So, and we have a balcony, which we've never had before, and uh, we like to sit on the balcony, although it's hard because it's been really hot and humid out and rainy this whole summer, and at night it gets buggy, and so there hasn't been too many opportunities in the last month really to, to hang out on the porch, but earlier in the spring it was, or early in the summer, it was really nice, and I'm looking forward to the fall. Um, to being out there at night and being cozy and so, and it's just nice and really bright and that kind of thing. So, um, the balcony is right over there. So I have some nice bright light. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, kind of getting into why it's been so long other than the fact that obviously there's a lot been going on in my life. It's all interconnected, obviously. Um, I have been in a bit of like a rut or a pause on my creating and crafting since really the beginning of my pregnancy. Um, I had gotten really, really bad morning. I say morning because it was not just the morning sickness at the beginning of my pregnancy and um, was on home IV therapy, not to get into the details of it too much, that I was physically not able to knit and then that kind of put a pause on the momentum that I had going at that time. And then I, I felt this like, not to get super personal, but I felt like this pressure this personal personal pressure, obviously, on myself, but if I was going to do any knitting or creating, that it should be for the baby. And for some reason, I really haven't felt inspired to do that, um, which makes me feel guilty. Um, I just didn't 
want to do that and I didn't want, I wanted to use up yarn that I had and none of the yarn that I had seemed suitable. Um, I showed you a work in progress of a baby sweater in the last episode. I didn't mention that it was potentially from this baby, but it was started for this baby. I, I haven't worked on it. It's not done yet. It's got the body is done and it's got part of the sleeve done and that's it. Um, sorry, I'm looking over there because I'm noticing there's a bug on, on the, sh on the curtain. Um, yeah, so I never finished that, and then I just, like, felt like, well, if I was going to be making something, then it better be for the baby, and I didn't have much of a desire to do that, like I said, for reasons, I don't know. Um, and so then I wasn't knitting or making anything for months and months. Um... And, uh, finally, I, so I'm, I have a couple things to show you, uh, that got me back into it. So I have two crochet projects, and I have a knitting work in progress, but the knitting work in progress was me kind of being like, F it. Knitting is my number one coping skill, and... Why do I need to put pressure on myself to make something for the baby? There's going to be years and years of time for me to do that, and it's okay. And my mother, who's a very prolific knitter, has been knitting away for months, and this child will not be knitted sweaterless. So that helps. Um, but, uh, that's basically been what has prevented me from doing anything. And uh, I'm happy to be getting back into making because it does make me feel better. And this has been a pretty stressful process and to not have this coping skill is, uh, is silly. So here we are. And I'm going to show you the two works in progress, and I, no, I'm sorry, the two finished objects that I have, and I'm going to show you my work in progress. So let's get started. Um, okay, so what kind of got me back into making a little bit was I decided one weekend that I was going to go crazy if I didn't make something, and I really wanted to make something, and I didn't want it to be too big and, you know, still mom guilt. So I decided to take some leftovers and crochet this little um, bear amigurumi. And the um, pattern name is Oso Donato Amigurumi. And it's a bear. It's a free pattern by Lucia Lanucas. Lanucas, I'm sure I'm butchering it. Um, but it's a little crocheted bear with no arms because that's kind of, that's the style of it. So here it is. So this was completed, you know, pretty quickly. Um, and it was kind of like a good icebreaker to get me back into doing something. Although then it was like quite a while before I did anything else. But like months, but still I made this back in the spring. Um, and it is with leftover um, Quince & Co. yarns. So the gray, the beige, and the red, and the blue are all um, are all chickadee, which is their support weight, and then the pink stripe is turn, which is their fingering. And then the, um, the black yarn for the really kind of sloppily done eyes and nose detail is just a leftover worsted weight um, black yarn that I had in my stash. I don't know the brand. It's from years ago. Um, and I crocheted this using a size... Oh, I didn't write it down. I, I, I see a picture of work in progress. I think it was with an F hook. Um, and it was really fun to do. It starts out, you make each leg separate, and then you work your way up, and then you kind of join them and do the body 
So it's all one piece. You can obviously tell that. It's cute. Um, and then you do the, the nose and the ears and you sew them on. And I added the little bow because I thought that was cute. Um, and uh, yeah, it would. this would be really cute if you had like you know, like the rattle maker noise things inside because then you could shake it or like if you put uh, like crinkle kind of plastic in it so that it kind of made a noise when you squeeze it that would make it kind of more of a baby friendly toy but um, it doesn't I just stuffed it because that's all I had and um, I think it's pretty cute um, I have like an opinion or a feeling on using uh, regular wool, like not superwash wool or what have you, for a toy. So I feel like for it to be really functional, you really want to be able to like throw it in the washer and dryer. Uh, so I don't know how that works, but it was low commitment. So, uh, you know, I just used what I had. And um, it's cute. I... There's, she has different versions of this. She has a bunny version. You could do all sorts of things and it would look different uh, based on the colors you use, obviously. And you could add arms if you think it looks weird without the arms. I think it's kind of like a Scandinavian type of look um, without the arms, but it would not be complicated at all to add some arms and sew them on. Um, so there's my little bear. So there's that, put them up there. And then this project I completed just a few weeks ago. Um, and I'm really, I really like how this came out. So this is the, I will tell you in a second, Bridget the Elephant pattern by Carrie Lord uh, from Toft yarns. It's a paid for pattern. It costs three dollars. Um, I think three, I'm sorry, like three pounds, I guess, which is about four dollars American. And here he is. A lot to say about this guy, but let's talk about him first, how he came out, and then we'll kind of talk through the details of it. So here he is. He's, I think, super cute. Um, I made this out of an acrylic yarn from Michaels. Uh, hated working with it. It's worsted weight yarn. Look at his little belly. Oh, so cute. He does sit up on his own independently. Obviously, I'm holding him, so like you're not going to really get that sense, but I promise you he does. I'll put him up behind me when I'm done talking about him. Um, it's got a little tail. I don't remember what the yarn brand was, but there's so much I want to say. I have to figure out like where, where do I want to start. Um, the eyes are, are leftover wool yarn. Um, show you the side. back and his trunk is like pretty bendable so you can kind of just do it straight down but it totally can be bent up like that and it's cute so okay this guy um so first of all the yarn once again i feel like for practicality's sake that an acrylic yarn is the best yarn to use for knitted or crocheted toys. However, <laughs> crocheting with it is a different story. It's kind of interesting because I always used acrylic yarn for years, for years of my making, and majority of which was when I was crocheting, and I used to crochet a whole lot of amigurumis, and you can see them on my Ravelry Project page, like I mentioned. It goes back to 2008. And I used to crochet with acrylic all the time. And they're really good for toys, not just because of the washability, but because they do kind of work up kind of stiff. And so that helps keep 
the shape um, versus a wool yarn, which may have more of a drape to it or, um, I don't know, just a, a different type of feel to it. Acrylic yarn, especially when knit at, or crocheted at a dense gauge, which is what you do when you're making a, a stuffed toy, it holds its shape, it becomes very structural, it doesn't flop down on itself, um, it basically just stays the shape that you crochet it. Um, but this was like really hard to crochet with in that it was so squeaky. It literally squeaks. Um, I know that's one thing like I always remember hearing people say with acrylic yarn, oh it's like squeaky. And when I used to work with acrylic yarn I'd be like, no it's not, it's not squeaky. And I think that, it, I mean it really depends on which yarn you use. Um, I used to use the Vanish Choice yarn a lot for amigurumis. This was not Vanish Choice, so this one definitely did. It was a Loops and Threads brand, which is the Michaels brand. I don't think Loops and Threads, I'm sorry, I don't think Vanish Choice, which is a lion brand, 100% acrylic, is as squeaky, but this was squeaky. And I have used, back in the day, I remember a Loops and Thread acrylic yarn that was squeaky, so... It definitely is a thing. Now, I use a metal crochet hook, so the metal plus that yarn may be what makes it squeak. If maybe you use a wooden crochet hook, it wouldn't squeak, but I think it might. So, it's not just the squeakiness, it's just like, it, it, it's not pleasurable to work with. Um, it really seems like overall, the acrylic yarn selection, at least at Michael's, has really gone downhill over the years. I, I kept trying to go to Michael's over the last, like, six months to pick up, like, some basic acrylic yarn to make different stuff, and I couldn't really find much that I liked, and I used to find yarn all the time from there. So I don't know if it's just that my standards have changed, which is very possible, or if just in general their selection has worsened, or it's my specific Michaels, which is not the Michaels that I used to shop at back in the day. I don't know. So that's a note on the yarn. <laughs> um, the pattern. So this is a paid for pattern, and there are a lot of free amigurumi patterns on Ravelry. So my, and I'm fine with paying for patterns. I, probably the majority of the patterns that I work with are paid for patterns just because that just happens to be what I want to knit. Um, but there's plenty of alternative options on Ravelry for free, specifically on the groomies or stuffies. But this one was really cute and so I wanted to pay for it. I felt, felt like it was worth it. And it was because, I mean, the finished object is super cute. But that being said, particularly considering it's a paid for pattern, the details in this were not beginner friendly or user friendly. Uh, making the pieces themselves were fairly straightforward, but the finishing, the stuffing, not clear. And she has very specific stuffing instructions or expectations of the maker for your amigurumi or your elephant to come out looking close to this. Um, and so what I would recommend, first of all, is she has a YouTube channel where she shows in pretty close detail how to finish the pieces, how to stuff them, how to sew them together, how to do like the eyes, how to do the tail, which that was kind of awful instruction in that part. Um, in the pattern, it's like barely any instruction. Like I couldn't understand at all what it said. It was just like, do this. And then no, really no explanation, like <laughs> very simple. Um, the video was absolutely necessary and not so helpful, but enough that I was able to get a gist of a tail. But first of all, I really had to search to find these elusive videos because in the pattern it says visit the Toft UK website for video instructions. Okay, fine. So I go on the Toft UK website and there, there's nothing to be found on there. Nothing. Nothing. 
I'm searching. I, I can't find any video section. Maybe it's on there, but it's, it, it, it's not there. And so I'm looking through uh, Ravelry user comments. Let's put them up here. <laughs> I'm looking through ra the Ravelry finished objects. And I see people referring to the YouTube page. So I look, search on YouTube for Top UK, and there it is. I found her channel. Okay, that makes sense that it would be on YouTube, but that's not what it said in the pattern. It said, for video help, go to the Top UK website. It's not even on the Top UK website, like a link to their YouTube page. It's nowhere. So I think perhaps in the past it had been on the web on their website and then they took it off and put it on YouTube or what have you but it should really say in the pattern go to the YouTube the top UK YouTube website at this link for these videos particularly because they are so important to being able to actually create your an accurate finished object um, and considering it's a paper pattern you'd think they would make sure a that it's updated to have that but B, in general, should really be a lot more detailed. So I'm disappointed in, in that pattern. Um, now, one of the reasons why the, those instructions on the finishing is so important is because her, the designers, um, the designer, oh, let's take him down again. Sorry, grab, grab me by your nose. The designer's um, finishing, particularly the stuffing, is very much counterintuitive to any other amigurumi or stuffed toy that I've ever made before. Um, that's because pretty most patterns for crocheted um, amigurumi or stuffies and most like tutorials or articles that you may read about making these things always talk about using more stuffing than you even think that you're, you should use. Really stuffing it full, as full as possible, um, to create a shape that looks good, that feels good when you squish it, and that will last a long time, and that if you don't stuff it a lot, um, it'll end up being floppy and not look good over time. So when I was first making this, you know, I finished the body and I stuffed it really strong and it had more of a pear shape. Um, as you can see, I'm gonna lift his arms up. He's got like this belly and that's very much based on the amount of stuffing you use and the way that you stuff it. His arms are only stuffed at the, arms and legs are only stuffed at the hands and feet. Um, the head is specifically stuffed. It's, it's very much based, like, it, it, it's very specific so that you end up with the shape and the look of um, the pattern. If you stuffed the arms and all that to capacity, it would look different. Um, I am curious how it will hold up over time, but I, and I, I like kind of the more ragdoll, floppy look. But the finishing, like I said, <clears throat> where you sew the arms on, where you sew the legs on, where you sew the ears on and all that, really very much relied upon those videos. And this was not the first of this kind of thing that I've made. Like I said, I've made a lot of these, not this pattern, but a lot of crocheted dolls. And I struggled not having those instructions. Um, so... Yeah, but those patterns are so cute, and she has so many different, um, it's her Edwards Menagerie line. <clears throat> Excuse me. So many different uh, animals. They're all really, really, really cute. So I definitely want to make more. Um, and now, like, I would know how to do it, so it wouldn't be, <clears throat> excuse me, it wouldn't be, like, a struggle, but I really feel like if you're going to sell a pattern, all the information should be included in the pattern. And then it should also have a, a link to the handy videos that you made to go along with it, but you shouldn't have to rely on those videos 
as your full source of information. If you're paying for the pattern, it should all be in there. That's my two cents. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I feel like that was quite a ramble. I thought this video was maybe like 15 minutes long and we're already at 25 minutes, so I'm sorry. Okay, my knitting work in progress. <laughs> so I am making <clears throat> a shawl. It is the Guernsey shawl by, I think it's Jared Flood. It's a Brooklyn Tweed pattern. Um, yeah, by Jared Flood. I made this about a year ago for my husband out of Quince and Co. Finch, and I'm making one for myself now. It's scrunched up on the needle, so I apologize. It's probably hard to really see. And these colors are not particularly showing up accurate on camera. As you can see, it's a stripey shawl that I'm doing, which I'm not so sure about. But this was a project, like I mentioned before, that it was like, I just needed to freaking do something. And I have had these three yarns in my stash for a year or two, respectively. Hey, Lucy. I'm going to turn you so you can see the cat. Hi. And my boxes, which is a lovely part of my living room. <laughs> hey, Lou. Hello. See, she exists. Um, so the yarns that I'm using are all Swan's Island yarn, which is in their natural colors fingering collection, which is a 100% certified organic merino wool. So it's non-superwash. Each uh, skein has is 100 grams and 525 yards. So it's really more of a light fingering, which I think is what it's cl classified on um, Ravelry as. And I had gotten um, this one and a bunch of these skeins. Actually, two out of the three I had to break up into two or more balls because as I was winding them, there was like fraying or a knot so that was annoying, but that's why there's such a little one left. It has not used that much. I have like between the three of these colors, 1,500 1, yards of yarn for this project. So there's plenty. There's no way this would be all that's left. Um, so I got this one, which is the color Lupine or Lupine. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, I got this two years ago at Knitwit uh, yarn store in Portland, Maine. Um, and it was like one of those things that was a little bit too precious to work with, it felt like, and I never felt like I could find a good project for it. So that had been sitting in my stash, staring at me. And then a year later, still having not made anything with this one, we were back in Maine, so that was last summer. And um, we were in Camden, which if, you, if you're ever gonna go to Maine, I highly, highly recommend making your way up to Camden. Such a, such a, such a nice town, oh my God. Uh, and the Swans Island store is in Camden. So I went to the actual Swans Island store and I got the other two colors that I'm using. Um, and I, I don't have the balls, uh, ball bands anymore. I the balls, I don't have the balls. So there's this one, which is a natural indigo dye, and it's probably looking more blue on camera, but it comes off more of a green in real life. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. And then this one, which is a um, part of their iCat collection, and it's also indigo dyed. I hand wound all three of these skeins in a couple days, and it took about an hour for each one to hand wind. It's 525 yards. It was a lot. So there's that. Um, so these are hand dyed two out of the three with indigo. The purple colorway, not an issue. 
as far as bleeding. At least not yet, not in the hands. These two, particularly this one, and I, I know this is something that happens with indigo, but it's excessive as far as the bleeding. Um, winding this yarn, I mean, my hands were completely blue. Knitting with this, after three seconds, your hands are completely blue. Just knitting with it. With this one, it does the same thing, but it's not quite as bad. It takes a while to build up to the amount on your hands as this, you know, as this one. This one, like, literally, like, after 10 stitches, like, your hands are covered. Uh, with this one, it takes a little bit longer. I was knitting for a few minutes before I started this, and I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but there's a blue tinge on my finger. That's, like, nothing. Literally, your hands, I mean, your thumbs, everything just becomes covered in the indigo dye, particularly with this one, like I was saying. And I just think that's kind of crazy. Um, I, I understand that there may be some rub off with indigo, like a fresh pair of jeans, but I really feel like for the price, I mean, this yarn is like $35 or something, $30 for the skein. For the price, they should really uh, set it better. I was looking at the reviews on, of this yarn on Ravelry recently after I first started knitting with this and was like what the hell is going on and there's so many complaints back to when they first released the yarn about about that and I think Swans Island responded to one person saying like once you're done with your project soak it that should be enough to get rid of the extra particles of dye it shouldn't rub off on you I'm not convinced of that now, if you were working with, let's say, like, the green and a lighter colored yarn in the same project, you would have an issue with, I would imagine, and when you soak it, that there's going to be a lot of dye that comes out, and it would bleed. Um, I'm not concerned about that with soaking the project once it's done, because if anything, you know, it's going to soak into the purple and not show up, because it's a pretty dark color. Um, or soak into the blue, which, once again, the blue is more of a variegated. Here, I'll show you the previous stripe. So I don't think that would be that big of a deal. But what I am worried about is that even once I soak it, which I wouldn't normally do to block a shawl. Typically, when I block a finished shawl, I put it out and I spray it down. I don't wash it because I don't really think it needs to be washed. Um, I've, I've really only done that with like sweaters, but obviously I will with this. I'm going to soak it and I'm probably going to have to soak it several times, but I can't imagine that it's ever going to get rid of all the extra dye particles or what have you. And I'm worried I'm going to wear it and my neck is going to turn green <laughs> or my shirt's going to turn green and like, I don't know. So. That's concerning and it's disappointing, particularly because of how much the yarn costs. Uh, it is lovely to work with. It's fuzzy. It's going to fuzz up a bit. You know, it's, it's a very soft yarn, so you're going to have that with a soft yarn. Um, I think I'm going to make this fairly large. Just because I have so much yarn, it just seems like such a waste to not use as much of it as possible. I don't think I'll use the 1500 yards worth, but um, I plan to, to go beyond the repeats of that the pattern calls for. The pattern calls for one more repeat of one more section after this blue one that I'm doing, and then it's done. And that's how big I made the last one. I think the gauge may be a little bit smaller than, than the finch um, overall, but still I'm planning on going Definitely a, more than one repeat beyond what it's supposed to be. Um, I'm doing kind of an uneven striping. I'm not sure how I feel about what I want to do in that yet. I'm kind of just playing it by ear. I did one section for the green and one for the blue and then two for the purple. And I think I'm going to, as you can see, I did one section for the green and I'm going to do just the one for the blue. And then I think I'm going to do two of the purple again and kind of go from there. And I don't know how I feel about <laughs> the stripes, these colors together. 
I'm not really like a stripe knitted shawl person. Um, all the shawls that I've made have been just solid colors. I really like how more than one color looks in a lot of projects and shawls that are like brioche. I love brioche. I cannot figure out brioche for the life of me. It is too complicated for my brain. So I, when I decided, you know what, F it, I'm gonna knit something. I went with a project I've already made before and I just started. So that's what we're doing, but it's been very nice to knit with beyond the fact that it bleeds like crazy. That being said, you know, I will say it's not like it dyes your hands permanently. It's not hard to, to, to wash off. Literally just open water and it's gone. It's not like a scrubbing situation. So yeah, that's it. That's, <laughs> that's where I've been at. That's what's going on. Um, it is August 25th and I am due in a couple weeks, so I don't know when the next time you'll see me will be, because there's going to be a lot going on, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure I will post something to Instagram, so if you're curious on that, like I said, follow me there. It was very nice chatting with you. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, happy creating. Bye.